Hello everyone, it's your local obnoxious contrarian back again to shit on arcade races again. I kid you, I'm not doing that. Today's review is going to be a much more positive affair than last. And while dislikes aren't public anymore, I can see that some weren't fond of my Ridge Racer 1 review. I can understand that. Even though I stand by my take that Ridge Racer 1 is too bereft of content to be worth paying over 5 bucks for nowadays, I did put on that AVGN-esque persona a bit in that review, which was a mistake in hindsight. And looking back, it seemed as if though I treated my opinions as fact, which was wrong, and I sincerely apologize for doing so. So, let me be more honest here. I don't hate Ridge Racer 1. Sometimes it's the kind of game I can just sit down and 100% complete if I've only got an hour of free time. But when it comes to PS1 racers in general, there are probably over a dozen games I'd recommend over Ridge Racer 1 nowadays. That explains why I didn't give it a rating, because sure, it's outdated and then some, but during that brief little moment when it was about the only racer on the PS1, it wasn't half bad. It's a complicated situation with a lot of poorly aged games and why I think my rating system needs to be reworked, but moving on. In case you think I hate the entire Ridge Racer series, think again, because in 1996, Namco would finally get Ridge Racer right with Rage Racer. Right off the bat, you can tell this game takes itself a bit more seriously. The name just says it all. Rage Racer. It's angry and edgy. Sort of. Yeah, this isn't quite a full-blown gritty reboot, but we are getting there. No Galaxian minigame at the start. Instead, we are greeted with an intro sequence with some rather impressive CGI for 1996 standards. And that music. Yeah, we went from cheesy, upbeat techno to edgy industrial metal in just a couple of years. There are some people who consider this the black sheep of the franchise and dislike the game for that reason alone, but you know me, I don't mind some edge as long as it's done right. And Rage Racer's overall aesthetic is fantastic for 1996. The menus have been given a major overhaul, and the in-game visuals have taken on a more washed out and realistic look. This was something that critics at the time griped about in reviews of the game, which is funny because 10 years later, and they were completely ignoring games with much less vibrant color schemes. Seriously, what was the big obsession with washed out color palettes during the 7th gen? I don't know about you, but when I step outside, there's more than 4 colors on display. Thank God that trend died out. Remember the original PS1 controller, the one without the analog sticks? I'm still amazed that the PS1 Classic shipped without the much more recognizable DualShock design. But speaking of Ridge Racer, they actually opted to include Ridge Racer Type 4 on the system instead of the more recognizable first entry. And that's a good call because a game that's meaty and fun was a better choice than a game that was technically impressive for half a year. When it comes to content, Rage Racer finally gets things right. Ridge Racer Evolution, Ridge Racer Evolution, my god. Ridge Racer Revolution took some baby steps to improve the Ridge Racer formula, but Rage Racer takes a giant leap ahead. It still pales in comparison to some other racers, but we now have four tracks to race on, and each one of them is an absolute blast, with gorgeous scenery that's a perfect blend of multiple European-styled scapes. We even get an oval track to please the NASCAR crowd. But what makes the track selection even better is the new and enhanced career mode. We've got a selection of championships that increase in difficulty as you progress. And coming in at at least third place will reward you prize money that you can use for buying new cars or upgrading your current one. No longer will you have to keep booting up the discs slaving away at Galaxian just to unlock extra cars. This is a major and highly welcome upgrade to the formula and one that's a bit more familiar to modern racers. Plus, there's a primitive decal editor. I decide to give my starter car a red and black anarchy aesthetic, one that fits me perfectly. We have 13 cars to choose from. Not bad considering having 8 cars was the norm for mid-90s racers. See also Need for Speed 1. There's better variety this time, and the aforementioned customization adds a layer of replayability that the first entry was severely lacking. 
I love this woman who walks up in front of the car before the race starts because she looks like the grown up version of that 90s dancing baby gif. Once we hit the tarmac, we are greeted by the enhanced controls. A tad bit more realistic, but very fun. Well, aside from the drifting mechanics, but we'll get into that soon. I just love passing through the gorgeous tunnels and making my way downhill on tracks that would be impossible to race on in real life. That's all amplified by the new sound the OST takes on. The soundtrack's quite a bit different than the first one, with a mixture of drum and bass, industrial, and a newfangled style of hard rock known as nu metal, which would explode in popularity by the end of the 90s. The music's definitely relative to the time period it was released in, but it's all very good, with a blend of techno beats mixed with metallic, crunchy guitar work. This grungy aesthetic with the washed out colors and industrial metal is something that wouldn't continue as the series went on, making Rage Racer somewhat of a black sheep in the series. Well, aside from the time it tried being a burnout clone, but we don't talk about that. Rage Racer also has an announcer who will commentate on your racing, but this time it's done by a woman who sounds like she's covered underneath a mountain of pillows. Okay, it's the last trip. The race is on. Show them what you've got. That Two laps to go. Seriously, this wasn't the N64. The PS1 could pull off better voice work with marginal compression. It just baffles me that the developers would put so many obnoxious vocal effects over the announcer's voice. Rage Racer is a noticeable improvement, and the first Ridge Racer game I'd wholeheartedly recommend. But that recommendation does come with a massive caveat. Classes 4 and 5 are pretty much where I would hang in the tower if I were you, because it becomes a fucking grind fest, and you'll basically have to opt for cars with manual transmissions only during the last few races. Not only that, but racing on the same four tracks again and again and again gets pretty tedious if you ask me. One way to make this game easier is if you have a Game Shark disc, you can just put in the infinite money cheat before starting the game, something I wish I had done before playing in this game. And this is something I didn't get into in my last Ridge Racer review, but the drifting mechanics in these first couple of games suck ass. I was only able to get it to work properly about half of the time, and I'm lucky for it to not glitch out and have me turn the other way. And I don't think I've played many other games where the drifting mechanics were this tough to pull off. Does that mean Ridge Racer is bad? No. This is the point where Ridge Racer finally got it right, and it would only get better from here out with Ridge Racer Type 4 being the magnum opus of the series for most fans. Rage Racer still has its problems and it might become a slog after the two and a half hour mark, but overall, this was pretty good for a 1996 racer. I'm feeling a 6.5 or a 7 out of 10. This has me a bit more sold on the Ridge Racer series, and I'm looking forward to getting to Type 4 from here on out. I have played a bit of that game, and I adored what I played. So I'm hoping that and everything else are great games as well. This review wasn't something I originally planned on doing, but since I have let some people down with my hot takes on the first Ridge Racer, I thought I'd apologize and make up for that with a review on what I would consider to be the first good game in the series. I don't like disappointing people with my content, and while I still stand by my opinion that Ridge Racer 1 is painfully outdated and arguably not even worth playing anymore, I should have scripted that review better and not acted like such a douchebag with my opinions, and I'm sincerely sorry if I let any of you guys down with that video. But moving on. Rage Racer is good. Not perfect by any means, but a decent romp of a game that PS1 racing fans should not miss out on.